must it be like to be born a prince, heir to a kingdom and a throne, and then to find yourself one day considered just an ordinary guy living in the suburbs. This was the fate of Rezo Pahlavi, the son of the late Shah of Iran. I first met him many years ago when he was just a young man on one of several trips I took to Iran to interview his parents, the Shah and the Empress, before they were sent into exile. Little did I know that the crown prince would not become king. But recently, with the possibility of changes in Iran, there is the chance that he might yet be king. Reza Pahlavi was born to Rul, the son of the Shah of Iran, the king of kings, the emperor, and the beautiful empress Farah. He was destined to inherit the Peacock throne. When you think about being a king, does it seem like an overwhelming, a, a very big responsibility? Of course, it's uh, really something which is really very important. But his father was hated by many, accused of being a corrupt dictator. Can someone in this country criticize you? No. You cannot uh, insult uh, the king. In 1979, the Islamic Revolution changed everything. The crown prince was 19 when his father, the Shah, was deposed and replaced by fundamentalist clerics. Soon after, some 50 Americans were taken hostage and held for 444 days. Meanwhile, the Shah and his family were living in exile. The Shah died in Egypt in 1980. Reza Pahlavi, who is 42 now, has been living in the U.S. for almost 20 years. He says events back home give him hope. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, some 4,000 Iranians took part in a candlelight vigil, expressing sympathy with the victims and denouncing terrorism. And recent celebrations after soccer matches have turned political. Thousands in the streets, some shouting anti-government slogans, and others surprisingly calling for Pahlavi's return. Your Highness, have you always felt that one day you would go home? When I think of my country, especially after so many years of having, having been away from it, uh, it has become really a focal point in my life. And uh, I've never looked to, to anything else than to be back in my own homeland where I belong. Do you think realistically it will happen? I don't know what will happen to me personally that is not in my hands to decide. It is for the Iranian people to determine in which capacity I'll be there. We saw the end of the Soviet Empire at the hands of the people. And I can only think that the same way Russians brought down the Kremlin, East Germans brought down the Berlin Wall, so would the walls of Islamic theocracy be brought down in Iran by the hand of the people. What is the major source of the discontent? I think it boils down to two things, lack of political freedom and lack of uh, economic uh, opportunities. One out of two Iranians is living under the poverty line, and the people are ready to explode. They're looking for a way uh, out of this mess. You want democracy for your country, which means what? Free elections? I'm talking about self-determination, parliamentary system, political parties. Democracy, as we see it, practice in the Western world. But secularism is the key word here. You cannot have true democracy unless there is separation of church from state. So what you envision is a democratic government, free elections, but you would be a, a monarch, a constitutional monarch. That would have to be their choice in a national referendum. What if they don't want that? I would go back as a simple citizen. With all due respect, there was a revolution. Your father was hated. Many people called your father corrupt. I can remember when he was called a bloodsucker. Why should they want a Pahlavi to come back? Well, first of all, this is not about the past. It's about the future. And I think that... What I can tell you about my father is that he was a decent man, and he tried to do the best that he could for the country. Were there mistakes? Of course there were mistakes. It has often been said that one of the reasons that so many in the Islamic world hate us is because the United States supported your father. This resulted in the taking of American hostages. How do you answer that? History will judge whether or not at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, what happened in that era was bad for Iran or good for Iran. But I am my own man. I have my own vision. 
I have my own ideas of how I can best help my country as an Iranian citizen before anything else. Pahlavi's interviews and speeches are transmitted into Iran via satellite, and he communicates with supporters on his website or email. He says he knows his people are ready for democracy, but he doesn't expect the present government to just roll over. He asks the U.S. to support the dissenters and press for a national referendum. The assembly will now hear us. Even though the State Department considers Iran the world's most active supporter of terrorism, its president, Mohammad Khatami, spoke before the UN just days ago. He condemned the terrorist attacks of September 11th and seemed to be reaching out to the United States. It doesn't matter what kind of a smiling face they put on. The problem is that this system is incapable of reforming. The problem is within the law and the nature of the regime itself. When I first met Reza Pahlavi and his little brother and two younger sisters, he was 16. He was then called His Imperial Highness and lived in his own house on the palace grounds. One wall of his bedroom was decorated with pictures of Muhammad Ali and the Declaration of Independence. He says he was a typical teenager with one big exception. I was also groomed for a unique role to play one day in my future. I had to be prepared as the crown prince and the heir to the throne. Why did you have your own house? You'd be surprised to hear this answer, but there was not enough room in the palace when my sister Leila was born. There were like two main suites and maybe three, uh, three be bedrooms. Between his own schooling and the Shah's hectic schedule, the young prince didn't see much of his father. A total in his lifetime, he later calculated, of just two months. Do you regret very much that you didn't really know your father? I think that it's an element that has always been uh, missing in my life. But I could understand the reasons and I could relate to that. Young Pahlavi left Tehran in the summer of 1978 to train as a fighter pilot in Texas. He said it so absorbed him that he barely noticed the rumblings of revolution at home. Did you feel that your future was stolen from you? Uh, that's an interesting question. I've never thought about it this way. I do think that not just me, uh, a future was stolen for so many in my generation and the following generations. Um, an opportunity uh, at moving ahead. We were brought back to the medieval times. Today, Pahlavi lives relatively modestly in Maryland with his wife, who is a lawyer, and their two daughters. He gets some financial support from other Iranians living in this country, but most people think the Pahlavis left Iran with millions and millions of dollars. It's total hogwash. It's total nonsense. It is not true, and it was never the case. So you don't have millions and millions? No, I don't. I remember when I met the family, your youngest sister, Leila, was an adorable, very happy youngster. And she died recently. It was reported that it was a suicide. My sister Leila was perhaps the most affected by the loss of her father. She was only not even 10 at the time. And so it was very difficult for her to recover from that. Uh, on top of all that, she had a series of uh, illnesses that did not help too much uh, her psychological state of mind. I think that at the end she just lost heart. It's just a matter of uh, one night maybe taking one too many sleeping pills. It was very tough uh, for my family, of course, for myself, because uh, she really had a very pure heart. Your Highness, your father told me in 1977, that was two years before he was deposed, he said that he felt he was destined to be king. What do you think your destiny is? Let me put it this way. For me, the finish line in my mission in life, my only mission in life, is to see the day that my compatriots are going to the polls in that national referendum and cast their votes to decide the future of their country. That day to me is the realization of my dream for Iran.